From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of Hot Chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Bob Allen, for being the voice of the Rick Altizer Show. Uh, this is Rick Altizer, and uh, you're listening to my show. Uh, okay, so for those of you who've been listening, uh, you'll notice the last few weeks I've had some reruns. And the reason for that is I'm currently in the middle of finishing up a movie. And um, I've had some friends say, you know, Rick, the person you need to interview is yourself. How did you get a radio show? How did you, you know, get here? And so I'm going to try a little experiment today. Usually I talk to other people, but today I'm just going to talk to you. Uh, So you're going to have a conversation with me today. And uh, I think today what we're going to look at is how does a guy uh, get to direct a movie? How does that happen? How do you get to be making a movie? So that's kind of what I'm going to talk to you today is about just kind of my own life, how I got here. Um, I'm a former recording artist and uh, now a movie director, and so uh, we'll kind of just discuss how that happened. Uh, We might look at the music thing maybe a little later, but for today, uh, we're going to be looking at how does someone really without a a large movie-making background, how does that guy make a movie? Uh, And your guess is as good as mine, Uh, you know, God is the only thing I could say to that. But what I'll, what I'll say is just to give you a little background, I, I have a business partner uh, whose name is Kent Songer, and Kent and I have a company called Fusic Entertainment, start out as Fusic Music, and Kent was the guy who signed me to my first record deal. I was signed to a uh, label in Nashville called KMG Records, and the K stands for Killin, for Buddy Killin. Uh, Some of you might know that that name is a a little familiar to you. If you are uh, in Nashville and you're going down Music Row and there's the those goofy statues of the uh, naked people dancing, which I think is probably some of just the dumbest statues I've ever seen. But that's just my own opinion. Uh, But right there, that circle, that's Buddy Killen's circle. And so they named that after Buddy. He started uh, Tree Publishing, which now became Sony Tree. But much of the publishing industry in Nashville, Buddy Killen had a lot to do with starting that. And so he wanted to start a record label, kind of like his friend Mike Kerb. Uh, He wanted his own label. And I was the first artist they signed. This was back in uh, 98, 99. So this is going back a ways. And that's where I met my my business partner, and I uh, sold dozens of records. I have dozens of fans all over the world, and uh, the label did end up going out of business, uh, probably because they hired me. And so my whole music career and how I got into music, I will probably do that on another one of these. Uh, We'll just see how this one goes. And I hope this is interesting enough that you want to actually sit and listen to this. Uh, So... I, we, I had this music partner, business partner. We were doing uh, music projects. And uh, for those of you who you know live here in the 2017, you know uh, the music industry has really changed. And it was uh, probably, I'm guessing, about uh, four or five years ago, I said to my business partner, we've got to get out of music. The way we made income was uh, making music products. Uh, and you know, again, I'll talk about that in a, in another in another lifetime, another another interview. But we made music products, and that's how we made that's how we fed our families. Um, and it was getting harder and harder to do that. Uh, the record sales were going further and further away. We were doing a lot of children's ministry products, and it's just was that industry was dying on the vine. People were not buying plastic anymore. They didn't want to buy CDs. They were downloading them. Uh, illegal downloads have really hurt the industry. Uh, iTunes and, and different uh, ways were, were coming up on how you can listen to music. Instead of having to buy a bunch of plastic, you just have a phone, and in that phone has the access to the Internet, and on that access you pay your 
four bucks, five bucks a month or whatever it is, and you've got unlimited music. You can listen to any album you want. So that really killed the music industry, which uh, has made it really difficult. They've had to reinvent themselves. Uh, and and the, the way to make money, and again, we'll talk more about this in, in the, on the music episode, but the way to make money in the music industry today is you got to be on the road. you got to go play. Well, what we were doing, we were making products that we were selling uh, on TV uh, and uh, selling mostly to kids, and that was just dying. That was just going away. So I said to my business partner, we've got to get out of the music business, and we got to get into film. At that time, the Christian bookstores, the CD space for, they used to have rows and rows and shelves and shelves of, of where you'd have music CDs, uh, for those of you who can remember back in those days. And those shelves were going away, and what was getting put on them was was DVDs. Uh, and so these Christian movies were coming out, and family movies, and uh, uh, children's videos. And so the DVD market was taking over for that. And again, this was uh, five years ago. Even that's starting to die, but that's a whole other story too. Now you can go to Walmart and buy a DVD for, you know, $3.48. And so that's really killing the DVD market because it's so expensive to make a movie and you can't make your money back if people think the value of your DVD is five bucks. Uh, that's why DVDs are $20, because it costs a lot of money to make a DVD. It's not like a record. Uh, you can make a record nowadays, You can pro- with, with home studios, $30,000, you can make a record. You cannot make a movie for $30,000 and market it. You, you're, you're looking at a quarter of a million to $2 million. And so when you're selling your DVDs for 5 bucks, you're not going to make it. You're not going to. So anyway, I'm digressing. I'm hoping this is going to work, guys. I've never done this before. Um, so uh, we decided movies. we got to get into movies. So my business partner hooked up with Pure Flix. So they make Christian movies. And he, he was actually involved in putting some of the marketing uh, plans together for the God's Not Dead movie that, that came out. And so we started a uh, kind of working in that industry, mainly as consultants. And then uh, we've also been working with Shonda Pierce for uh i've been working with shana now for about 12 years and we we were helping do her marketing getting her dvds in uh, the, the bookstores and selling her products and i started working with shonda probably uh about six seven years ago kind of helping her do videos helping her do music uh promotional videos things that would go on youtube and things that would maybe promote her new dvd that's coming out or uh, and, and so she, she had a conversation with me about, about f- uh, four years ago, and she said, I, I want to make a movie. And she was talking to me, and I said, well, uh, golly, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make a movie, but I can make a demo, a demo tape. Back in the day, back when we had tape, for those who are uh, uh, 30 and under, you might not know what I'm talking about, but we used to have cassette tapes. And when you wanted to get a record deal back in my day, you would take three songs and you'd put it on a tape, a cassette tape, and you'd send it to the record company. And that would be a little demo tape. And they'd listen to your three songs and then they would say, yeah, I like it or no, I don't. And if they liked it, they'd want to maybe hear more. And then eventually they'd want to get you in the studio and record a song or two in a big, expensive recording studio. And then next thing you know, you got a record deal if, if things work out. So I said to Shonda... You know, I can't make a full movie. Gosh, I don't know what I'm doing about making a movie, but I can make a demo tape. My son, David, who's been on the show uh, at that time, was was doing a lot of wedding videos. And so I was kind of watching what he was doing. Uh, the The technology had advanced so that you can buy what looks like a, uh, you know, a, a, a camera, uh, what looked like what would be like a 35 millimeter camera. It would be a digital camera with a nice lens. And you could get good quality with that. Uh, they were starting to make for $1,000 uh, camera bodies and another 1000 for a lens. So for a $2,000 investment, you could shoot something that would look good. It actually looked like a, almost like a movie um, coming off a movie camera. And so uh, I said, just, I can do that. I can make a little demo. 
Uh, you're listening to uh, Rick Altizer on the Rick Altizer Show. I got to break in every couple of you know a couple times during the show and let you know that. Uh, so, so my thought was, you know, I can figure this out. I've been producing records. I've done stuff. I could probably do a little five minute demo for you, Shonda. Uh, I'll go on the road with you for a weekend, and I'll film some stuff. And you know, I'll get five minutes of something that we could let somebody see, and maybe they'd be interested. So the first step there and how to how to make a movie was to just come up with an idea and just do it and say, yeah, I can do that. Not let the fact that I've never done it before keep me from doing it. The fact that I've never made a movie before, you know, well, I wasn't planning on making a movie. I was just going to make a five minute little something. And so I went out on the road with Shonda, not knowing what in the heck I'm doing. Uh, I had used the camera some. Uh, I got uh, a, a camera that that we had and then I got... I borrowed my son's lens, a nice lens, got a little shoulder mount, and I put this little camera on the shoulder mount, and pretty much everything I filmed, I just put on auto, auto focus and auto, uh, you know, white balance, and had a little uh, shotgun mic that went on it, and got a little lavalier for her to talk to, and pinned it on her shirt, and uh, so I went around, and we 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 went out on a weekend, I think it was like a four-day week weekend, and I think I did two or three shows with her and went on the bus and did some interviews. And uh, she talked and was talking about, at that time, she was going through a really hard time. Her, For those who saw the movie Laughing in the Dark, you'll know this. And I've also interviewed Shonda on this show, so you can uh, hear her talk about that. But uh, her life was just a, a mess. Her daughter had uh, become estranged from them. She had basically cut them off. I don't want to talk to you and you can't see your grandkids or talk to your grandkids. And that was killing Shonda and, you know, just hurting her so bad. And then her husband, David, you know, was so distraught. He started drinking, uh, became an alcoholic. Uh, So as I was interviewing her, they had been separated because she was trying to do the tough love thing with her husband. So she had a daughter who was estranged from her. She had a husband who was separated and was struggling with alcohol addiction so she was in a very hurting vulnerable place and so we went out and I did this little weekend and filmed her and we talked about her life uh, her, her family her husband we talked about all this and so uh, we came back uh, and I ended up cutting together you know got some you know my little software here my computer my home computer cut together 16 minutes I thought, uh, wow, you know, we thought I would get five, but I made 16 minutes. And just kind of as an aside, for those who have seen the Laughing in the Dark movie, I would say about 10 minutes of that 16 minutes actually made the movie. Uh, And so, you know, and by the way, that movie was in movie theaters. The night it came out was the number five. I say this all the time. It was the number five movie in America the night it came out. I, I gosh, I, that feels so weird saying that. It's like you're tooting your own horn. But it was. And, you know, for a guy like me who didn't know what the heck he was doing, that's pretty awesome. But here I am with a camera, right? At the uh, six, $700 camera. And I think at that point, it's like a $500 lens. And, 10 minutes of that, a guy who's shooting on auto, 10 minutes of that gets on a movie theater that 80,000 people buy tickets to see. And it's the number five movie in America. So that's what's so great about this country and where technology is. You can do this. And so uh, I make the 16 minutes and uh, her and her manager, her manager's Andrew Tenenbaum. He is a very well-known manager, in, especially in the comedy world. Uh, and Shonda Pierce is a Christian comedian. Andrew uh, managed Robin Williams. He manages uh, Billy Crystal and um, uh, Woody Allen. And so just, you know, all these major uh, comedy acts and kind of said to Shonda, Shonda had gotten an award for the being the top selling female comedian in history. And, uh, you know, Kent Songer, my business partner, was uh, very instrumental in, in, in that because he did all of her DVD promotions. But uh, just a little plug for my buddy Kent. Uh, but he said, how come you're winning this award? I never heard of you. And her response to Andrew was, well, uh, if you haven't been to a Baptist potluck, you wouldn't know who I was. So um, so we make this 16 minutes and 
Andrew, the manager, and Sean to take me out to, to lunch. It was we, we had pizza. I remember where we were down in Nashville. And they said, Rick, we want you to make this. We think this is great. Uh, this, is, this is exactly what we want, and we want you to make it. So again, had I not said, let's do, I can do five minutes, right? Uh, I would have never gotten this other opportunity. So the first thing was, you've got to go and do something. You can't just wait for somebody to come and say, oh, I want you to make a movie or I want you to do this. You go and you make it. You go and you do it. And so, and I start off with something that was achievable. You know, if, if a good idea is not a good idea unless you can execute it. If you can't execute your idea, it's not a good idea. Um, and people will sit in, you know, especially creative types, they'll sit in meetings, they'll come up with all these ideas and these, these things, but they're not good ideas if you can't actually do it. Well, we don't have staff to do that. That's not a good idea. A good idea is something you can execute. Five minutes, I could execute. I could pull that off. And it, I ended up getting 16 minutes, which actually became, you know, a pretty good 16 minutes. It was pretty powerful. And I realized the same skill I've used as a music director, I mean, a music uh, a producer, sorry, as a music producer, that same skill is used as a film director. I've got, you know, I've done a lot of music production. I've produced all of my own stuff and I've worked with other people. Uh, I have, okay, I, gosh, here I go again. I've got Johnny Cash credits. I've produced Johnny Cash, Vince Gill, Marty Stewart. Um, you know, so I've had little uh, working with John Carter Cash and doing some stuff with, with them. I got at, and I've, I've been worked with Tree 63 and Russ Taff and different Christian artists and got a Rebecca St. James credit. So, you know, I've had some, some uh, production credits. So, you know, I kind of have an, a way of, understanding of, okay, I want to tell my story with music, how I get a project to sound uh, like it's a cohesive project, like it's one album. I don't want it to sound like it's five albums in one. So that same thing kind of went with the storytelling of taking a, a thread of a story and, and weaving it together and making 16 minutes. Uh, my name is Rick Altizer. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, and I have to do that about every eight minutes, so that's the last time I'll do that. So anyway, we're, we're making our movie. I've got 16 minutes, and now they say, Rick, we want you to make a movie for Shonda. And I'm just sitting there going, uh, mm, uh, okay. Now, this is a guy who's made, uh, you know, I've done some videos for her, but I've never made a movie before. I've never, you know, done much in video. Most of my work has been in music. And okay, and, and Shauna just really felt like I understood uh, what she wanted to do and how she wanted it to, to sound. And it just came from a place that Shauna and I are, are good friends. We've known each other for years. And I think she just knew that I would, uh, would communicate it in the way she wanted. I told her from you know, in that meeting, I said, I'll make it, but I'm not going to make a beauty piece. I'm not interested in doing something that's just a promo promotion for Shonda Pierce. I don't want to do that. I want to make something. And she goes, that's what I want. I don't want a beauty piece. I want it to be real. I want it. And so I got this amazing opportunity. And what I thought was going to be uh, maybe something that would be on her tables and, and uh, Kent, my business partner, and I would probably get it into Christian bookstores. And so I started making this and started going on the road with her. Just me, no crew, no help. Me, a shoulder mount, a tripod, a camera bag, you know, running back to the soundboard and plugging in my little portable recorder into the soundboard so I could get her audio off the microphone and then running up to the front of the auditorium and putting some little microphone uh, units out there so that we could record the audience sound when they clap and laugh. And then going back there with my tripod and, and filming Shonda when she talks. But then uh, I've got to get some of the audience and get some stuff behind her. So then I'd have to stop filming there and then go around and then film, uh, you know, when she's talking and maybe walk behind her a little bit, maybe get some of the crowd shots. So, you know, I'm not, fil I'm not even filming the whole show. I'm just taking bits and pieces and I go out and I maybe do five, six, seven of these shows and just kind of getting what I can introducing, uh, introducing, uh, uh, interviewing, uh, fans who are there talking to the fans and asking them, you know, why are they there and, and, and getting their stories and then, then interviewing Shonda and getting more of her story and, and her story starts to unfold and, and more pain. And then her husband, 
uh, spirals into alcoholism and then uh, have an interview with the two of them. Then they get back together and then he has a relapse. He basically drinks himself to death and he dies. So now we're still making this movie and her husband has died. So all this stuff is going on while we're making the movie. And so what started out as this movie about Shonda kind of navigating through her life as a Christian comedian really turned into this story of how do you navigate pain? How do you navigate absolute when your life just blows up? As a Christian, what do you do? And it just became this whole other movie. And so I put, put an edit together. Through this, my business partner, being the genius he is, starts working it and working it and finds uh, a company called Fathom who's going to put it in movie theaters. I'm going, what? It's going to be in movie theaters? So my little stuff I'm shot with my little, you know, my, my Canon camera is going to be on a movie screen? So what started out as this little small thing that was going to be on her table, it's going to be, uh, you know, maybe in the Christian bookstores. We never dreamed we'd get into Walmart or anything like that. It's going to be in movie theaters. And I'm going, oh, no. And the pressure starting to mount. The pressure starting to kick in because now we're putting all this money into marketing. Now there's these they're like $100,000 in marketing. It's like, what? You know, and, and Shonda looks at me and says, uh, this movie needs to be successful because I've lost a hundred thousand dollars, and my the person who's booking me, uh, you know, took took my money, and and all my things have fallen apart, and and all this bookings that I had have went away, and I've lost all this money. I'm just going what? And so there's all this pressure, uh, uh, starting to feel the pressure, and just having to pray, God, help me, help me get through this, help me get, uh, you, you know, to to make this movie. So uh, I, I start filming it and and uh uh going it's it finally get to the point where okay we've got a date and the movie is going to be in movie theaters on october 15th this was 2015 october 15th and so i i had a date now that i had to i had to have it done and so the pressure starts mounting up and so now i had to really get serious about putting putting this movie together and uh and so what i did was was i took all the footage of every time Shonda was speaking, every time she talked, I had someone transcribe it, and I had it printed out, and I had four inches thick of transcriptions, and and I organized all that uh, based on, w- I went through everything and just kind of started highlighting the things I thought I would need. Then I started taking out the highlights, and I made another document with all the highlights and then i whittled that down then i put them all on a card cattle on four by six index cards and then i started i got a little index card box and i started moving things around front to back and in that little index card box i made my movie on paper and kind of wrote it all out and made it on paper and uh i'm i'm looking at my time right now and i'm kind of getting blown away Cause it's like, wow, that went fast. My show's over. Um, so I guess I'm going to get two shows out of this. I hope you guys are okay listening to me ramble like this. Gosh, I hope this is good. I, I, sh- I know you're not supposed to apologize on the air. That's probably not a good thing. Uh, but you know, I- I'm not a professional uh, radio guy. Heck, I'm not even a professional movie maker. Uh, but I'm making a movie, and I got a radio show. So don't ask me how that stuff happens. That's just God. I'm going to finish this story. Uh, next week and uh, all this will be uploaded on my website so you can come you can listen to Shonda's interview my son's interview and plenty of other interviews by going to my website rickaltizer.com okay so this is the end of part one part two is coming up thanks guys bye the music you are listening to is from my scripture memory record and I want to give it to you for free. Just go to my website rickaltizer.com and click contact. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. Or how about liking my Facebook page, facebook.com slash show. I want to thank Paul Winkler, the investor coach, for sponsoring this show and I want to thank you for listening. So be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not 
Things endures all things.